Albert Einstein, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, John F. Kennedy, Tony Robbins, Michael Phelps, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. What else do they have in common? Well, they all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that, do you? You know what you hear even less about? The successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm an attorney, not a doctor, a lifelong student, not a coach. I'm also the creator of Cortography, a patent pending system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your superpowers, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest superpowers. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you, too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka, and welcome to Episode 16 of ADHD for Smartass Women. Today, we are going to talk about intuition and ADHD. When I was in law school... I had this group of friends that I hung around with, and I just had this sense that one of the young women in our group did not like me. No matter how hard I tried, I just got this energy from her, and it wasn't a positive energy. So she had this boyfriend who was also part of our group, and I could kind of tell he was interested in me. He paid a lot of attention to me, but the reality of it was I had a boyfriend, and I was completely uninterested. And my intuition told me that she didn't like me or trust me because she knew that her boyfriend was also interested in me. And I was so tired of the tension because I could feel the energy between the two of them shift every time I walked into a room. And I also knew how insecure she was. My gut just told me that. So I decided, look, I'm just going to tell her don't worry, I'm not interested in him. And besides, I would never do that to you because you're supposed to be my friend. And so I did. And it was completely the wrong decision. She went literally wackadoodle on me. And she told me that she wasn't worried at all. And besides, her boyfriend was madly in love with her. And of course, this created an even bigger riff because how dare I even think these things? Well, as you can imagine, I felt like a complete and total idiot, and I convinced myself that I, too, had been imagining these things. Well, lo and behold, about five weeks later, her boyfriend shows up on my doorstep, and he basically tells me that they had broken up, and she'd been complaining for a good six months about me and how she did not want me in her group. Apparently, I had also been the subject of many fights between the two of them. That was exactly when I started trusting my intuition. I had been right about it all, and I realized that that was not the first time that this had happened. Somehow, I always say, I can read the energy of people, and I know who's really happy, who's struggling, who cares about others and who doesn't. Like I instantly know other people's motivation, their agendas, why they're doing what they're doing. Like outwardly, they may express concern for another human being, but it's always abundantly clear to me what their underlying motivations are. If there really is just concern or if their motivation is all about a certain agenda. You know, and typically I'll have this immediate, often visceral intuition. I guess I should say visceral feeling because visceral means that it's it's intuitive, right? And so I had this feeling about what's going on, and then I'll just stand back and I'll watch it all play out. Part of, I think, what's going on with me is I'm so fascinated by people and why they do what they do. It is one of my areas of extreme interest, but it's also gotten me into trouble Because being ADHD, I'm also all about authenticity. So I'm direct and I speak up about how I feel. Usually it's when I'm asked or when I'm helping someone, but every once in a while, it's also when I'm just plain fed up. And the reality of it is most people, they don't want to hear it 
or they can't see what I see in them. Couple that with the fact that when I'm upset, I also have this need to be understood, which means that I want whomever I'm upset with to know exactly how I came to the conclusion that I did. You know, for years, I wrote emails and letters, and I know now that it was because I don't think linearly. So I often wrote these emails and letters just to figure out why I had this feeling in my body that I did. Most of them I never sent, but some of them I did. I also wrote emails and letters because my working memory was so bad. So I knew that I couldn't express myself well in person because I would literally forget why I was even upset. I just had, again, this visceral feeling and a general idea. But by the time I finally was sending this email or letter, I had literally been dealing with this visceral feeling for years. And so I had been irritated that long. And the person that I was irritated at just was completely clueless. They had no idea. And part of the reason they had no idea was because they didn't realize that I could feel this underlying motivation to why it was that they were doing or saying what it was that they did. So I am wondering if you can relate to this. You know, shortly after I realized that I had ADHD, but before I was formally diagnosed, I read an article from Dr. Lara Hannes Webb in which she talked about ADHD and the link to interpersonal intuition. And I can't tell you how much that clinched it for me and explained a part of myself that I had always knew existed, but I downplayed because more often than not, when I mentioned what I felt to most people, I was told, that's not what's really going on. So when I read this article that Dr. Lara Hannes Webb wrote about interpersonal intuition, I at that point just knew that was really what convinced me that, yep, I absolutely have ADHD. So many of us with ADHD, we have this intuitive grasp of what others need, feel, and want. Look, sometimes we inappropriately blurt out what we're thinking. We know we can be distractible and have trouble paying attention to what others are saying. We can be impulsive, but I have to tell you, the positive to this is underlying all these little symptoms and ADHD traits that might not always be so great is also the ability to read others like a book. Because we have this ability to tune into others on a deep level, Sometimes we're not even paying attention to what they're saying. You know, we dismiss their words completely. And what happens is our brains focus more on the connections and the relationships between things than on specific bits of information. And then, of course, we share our impressions with others and they tell us, you know what, you're wrong. And when you're constantly told that you're wrong, you start to think that you're just imagining things. But Again, in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, but no, no, I know I'm right. And then months or years later, something happens, kind of like my you know, situation with the woman friend in law school. Something will happen, and whatever you were discussing, it plays out, and you realize you were right all along. And this is because we see things that others either want to hide or they can't even see in themselves. And... I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but, you know, the sense that you feel like you know someone better than they know themselves. And I can't tell you how many times friends have told me this very thing. Now, usually they're telling me this when I'm actually helping them, right? (laughs) I'm helping them understand their behavior, their reactions, why they did what they did, why they are the way they are. But typically they don't want to hear it when it involves something that, let's say, I'm upset about, right? So this is exactly why we find so many therapists who are actually ADHD. They have ADHD. And discovering this link for me between interpersonal intuition and ADHD is also when, you know, I just stopped trying so hard to make myself understood. I stopped having to explain myself in letters and emails, and I just let it all go. I realized that I was upset because I could read people's underlying motivations. But the reality of it is, 
A, they were never going to admit that to me, or rarely were they willing to admit that to me, or B, they couldn't see it in themselves, so it never ultimately resolved anything. It just kind of made things worse. So let's talk about intuition. What exactly is intuition? Well, I think intuition is an automatic feeling. You know, it's not reflective or thought through. We just kind of pick it up and we can't really identify what triggered this automatic idea or feeling in ourselves, but clearly something does. You just have the sense that your intuition is telling you something and it can feel really familiar because you know what you should do, but you don't know why. You don't know why you know it. Intuition comes from subconscious experiences that we may not be holding consciously. You know, our feelings come from our thoughts. And most of the time, we understand the connection. But sometimes, you know, with our ADHD brains, our processing is so quick that our thoughts just sort of whiz by really fast. And what we're left with is just a feeling but we can't connect the thoughts that led up to that feeling. So there is nothing psychic or woo-woo about this. The thought here is that ADHDers, you know, we're just so much more intuitive because our attention wanders more. We're scanners. It's like when you're driving in a new area and you're paying attention to where you're going, but you're also scanning the horizon as you drive, right? And so you're picking up things that influence your thinking, but you don't realize what you're actually picking up. It's done on a subconscious level. But then you might get to your destination and someone mentions driving past a big red barn and you suddenly know what they're talking about and you know exactly where that big red barn is, even though you weren't paying attention and you would have never remembered that big red barn on your own. This is intuition. We're constantly scanning our horizon. We're absorbing everything, but we can't be specific about what it is that we're noticing. It's just a non-conscious level of thinking. And I believe that attention is related to intuition. So through all of our senses, right, stimuli is coming in and we're scanning it all. And because we're ADHD, remember, we have this surplus of attention. We're noticing everything. And most of it we dismiss as being unimportant, but some of it makes it to our focused attention. The fact that we can know something without knowing how we know it speaks to the fact that we're often not aware of what we are actually aware of. But intuition I think it's always based on some sort of knowledge or expertise that we actually have. There's some background to it. And, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be an expertise, but it has to at least be an experience that we've had with something, but we're not fully aware of the fact that we're applying that knowledge. Later on down the road, we may realize, oh, well, that's where that intuition came from. It was actually from knowledge that I had that at the time I didn't realize I had. <laughs> and I think that those of us with ADHD, we've always had an intuition or a gut feeling that we're different, right? And that we do things differently. I mean, I have not met one woman with ADHD who hasn't told me that, look, I always knew that there was something different about me. I just didn't know what it was. The danger, I think, is when we don't listen to this intuition and we try to fit in and be like everyone else. And, you know, our thought is, well, this works for everyone else, so why wouldn't it also work for me? I really think we need to pay attention to that voice. We know what works for us better than anyone does. You know, we were talking about this whole interpersonal intuition in our Facebook group and, or intuition, and one of the women in our group said that her intuition had mostly gotten her into trouble because she kind of learned to doubt herself from a very early age, and she wasn't even aware that she was doing this, and she wasn't even aware of her intuition until fairly recently. And she said that she would blurt out things that she had no reason to even know, and then there would be all this awkwardness around that. And so what happened was she learned not to say much about anything unless she was expected to. 
And so my response back to her was, perhaps what she should do is start trusting her intuition instead of just going right to shutdown mode. And so her response back to me was that, look, I'm trying to do this, but it's really hard to know what's intuition and what's impulse, you know, in the moment. And that she was in the process of learning the cues that her body was giving her because she would often not be able to tell the difference between her anxiety and her intuition. And so, of course, I had to follow this up with, well, have you considered that maybe your anxiety gets worse when you don't trust your intuition? And perhaps not trusting your intuition is responsible for your anxiety. And her comment back was, yeah, I think it does. And I'm learning that intuitive feelings are more visceral and they tend to come from my gut. And I experience anxiety more in my head. And that to me was just a huge aha moment because she really made me be able to put what I was thinking into words, right? So when you feel it in your head, it's more often anxiety. And when you feel it in your body, your gut, it's more likely to be intuition. And so I think the key really here is that we have to learn how to pause, right? And we have to ask ourselves, does this feel right to me? Is this my intuition speaking? And if it's my intuition speaking, I really need to pause and really reflect on it before I move forward or do anything more. So this is exactly where those of us with ADHD have trouble, right? We're distractible. I think we tend to be very hopeful and we're looking for what's easy because it works. And, you know, we'll do easy. We know that. We're trained to look for what's hard because somehow if it's hard, then, you know, we're told that, oh, it has to have so much more value. But really for us, we have to look for the workarounds on getting to where we need to go by tapping into our interest and looking for how to make things easier because we know if it's easy, we are actually going to do it. We are actually going to follow through with it. So now that we know what intuition is, let's talk a little bit more about this concept called interpersonal intuition. What is it? Well, it refers to the ability to pick up clues about relationships. It also includes the capacity for empathy and character judgment. Again, we were talking about this in our Facebook group, and a lot of women brought up the fact that they felt that they had more empathy for others than most people did. I also think that interpersonal intuition is somehow linked to that emotional dysregulation that we typically see in ADHD. You know, we have the same emotion. We just feel things more. And so it makes sense that if we feel things more, we are going to pay more attention to that gut feeling. Now, interpersonal intuition, it is clearly related to emotional intelligence. We just read people better. And I have to tell you of all my ADHD gifts, this one, interpersonal intuition is my superpower. It's the reading people like a book one, their motives and their energy. And again, I've always been able to do this. I just know when people are truly happy and at peace and when they're just pretending. And I think it's also the gift or the superpower that allows me to see people's gifts when they can't even see themselves. You know, I've always had the sense of knowing who people can be, knowing what they look like at their best. And I can track this back to literally second grade where I was always helping friends to understand themselves and their life better. I frankly was born this way. I've also noticed that if I'm hyper-focused on someone, sometimes I do a poorer job of understanding what's really going on with them because I'm not taking in the surrounding information. I'm just reinforcing what I already believe to be true. So let's say I meet someone for lunch and, you know, I don't know, I've done some research on them. So I know in advance that they're brilliant and they're successful. If I'm so focused on them, I listen more to their words and how they present themselves, and that confirms what I already knew to be true. But then I miss other stimuli that really helps me to figure out who they truly are. You know, and this ability to block out extraneous stimuli, like it's really great if you're sitting in a classroom listening to a teacher, but in a situation where you need to get the lay of the land and you need to figure out what's really going on with another human, like let's say on a first date, 
You know, distracted attention is so valuable because you're not quite sure what's important just yet, right? So it may be that you're taking in all this external stimuli, but you don't, you can't put it all together yet until, you know, again, you're, I don't know, you're on a date with someone and suddenly they mention that they had a really tough childhood or they moved to a different country every year. And so then all that extraneous stimuli that you've been taking in, it kind of all sort of comes together and you're able to put the whole picture together and you know exactly who that person is that's sitting across from you. Now, one of the downsides that I struggle with, and I have to tell you, it takes me a lot to even admit this about myself because I'm still putting it all together and I don't love this about myself, but connection is so important to me, like it is for a lot of us with ADHD. And I think it's this need to connect that drives the interpersonal intuition. Or maybe it's the interpersonal intuition that drives the need to connect. I still haven't figured that one out. I have to think more about that one. But anyway, because of my interpersonal intuition, connection can be difficult because of this knowing that I have about who people really are and how they really feel, not only about themselves, but also about me, right? And it's not really fair because everyone gets frustrated with others. That's just human nature. But usually we can hide it from other people, right? And so we just let it go. But the problem is if you can read this frustration in other people that happens naturally for everyone, for those of us with ADHD, I think it stresses our perception of the relationship. And so what I find myself doing is I'm constantly reassuring myself that their frustration with me is normal. And I do it to other people. The deal is, though, they can't read it in me. They can't read that I'm doing it. I'm able to hide it from them. So my ability to read their frustration, I have to just let it go, right? And I have to constantly tell myself that, you know what, this is normal. The other thing that I've noticed with this whole interpersonal intuition is that I've always wanted to be one of those women who travels with a pack of girlfriends, but that has always been difficult for me. One, because I know the motivation and insecurities of others, so I feel that energy. And when you put that many people together for an extended period of time, there's bound to be something going on, right? So I find that what I spend most of my time trying to do in those situations is smoothing over relationships, and it's just not relaxing for me. Now, other people don't see the need to smooth over, but I can feel it, right? And so it's something that I naturally do. And so because of that, it's, I don't know, it just becomes less fun, right? If you're constantly seeing the little strife that's going on and you're constantly trying to go over and, and patch it up. The second thing is, I've noticed that if I can get the right people together, then that doesn't happen. So what I tend to do is I tend to choose the pack because, again, too, I'm also pretty picky about who I want to spend my time with. But if I'm always the one who's choosing the pack, it means that I'm also the one who's doing all the work leading up to everything, right? I'm the cruise director. I'm coordinating. And whereas I used to be really good at this, I'm just getting progressively more challenged in this department. And I just have less of an interest to do that. So the upshot of all of this is what I've come to realize is that I love being around ADHD women. And I love being around them because they're so authentic and they're so transparent. And I don't, I don't feel too much around them. And I don't feel like I have to do all this work, right? Of patching everything up because I feel like they're much more like me. So they can feel this energy too. And so there's less patching to do. Now, I've also discovered that a lot of these ADHD women are also entrepreneurs. So we have so much in common. You know, this going for spa weekends, it's just not my thing. I'd frankly rather be home with my husband and my family, but I love meeting women friends for workshops and seminars and masterminds where we're all working and learning together. I really love that. And over the past several years, I've been so lucky to amass these group of women friends from all over the world who share my interests, they share my brain, and, you know, we meet. Sadly, they're not here, they're not local, but, you know, every couple months we go out and we meet each other. And I never have the sense that, 
I don't fit in in a group of girlfriends because I'm kind of on the outskirts, kind of taking all this stuff in and trying to manage it. You know, and I get it. You know, it's totally my fault in terms of it comes from me. But rather than go out with a pack of girlfriends, I would much rather meet them individually for dinner because what I realize is I'm bored right? I'm always looking for connection. And so this big group of, you know, women friends, it's just so hard to connect. And so if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it individually. So years ago, in keeping with my whole big groups of, you know, women connection kind of thing. So years ago, when my kids were young, I started a nonfiction book group. And I was tired of this weekend after weekend of events where we talked about nothing. You know, we drank wine, we drank cocktails, but we really, it was really difficult to connect. I mean, you can imagine kids are running all over the place. Everybody's got a cocktail in their hand. It was super fun, but I wanted more. And so what I did is I started this nonfiction book group and everything went great for, I would say, a good seven years when the group was comprised primarily of women that I had personally selected. But the minute members started inviting other people into the group and they invited them and they didn't ask the whole group, you know, and so people in the group got upset and the whole book group thing just, it blew up. And I felt, again, like I was on the outside watching and feeling others' motivations and others' insecurities. And as they, you know, they're scrambling around trying to keep this ridiculous social hierarchy intact. And it was also patently obvious to me what was going on. But for most of the women in the group, they were just completely clueless. And so what I did is I tried to patch it up for as long as I could. But then, you know what? Like a lot of things, it just sort of, it just sort of ran its course. And I, I tried to pull some of the women aside and, you know, and tell them, okay, this is what's going on and this is what we need to do to fix it. But they, they didn't, they just, they just could not see it. The other thing that I've noticed about ADHD women is in, you know, in keeping with, you know, this, this whole book group thing was they generally don't care about social hierarchies. Their entire goal is I just want to connect. And I think they're intensely curious. And so what happens is if that person piques their curiosity, they don't care if the person has the right pedigree, the right education, the right look. In fact, I kind of think that that sort of judginess is really distasteful to them. I know it is to me because, you know, we're all about authenticity. And if you're interesting to me, you're in. I just could care less about what others' expectations are. I'm inclusive and I hate anything that feels exclusive. When we struggle, I think it's when we follow these rules and we follow other people's expectations because it's been what we've been taught, right? And we just know that it doesn't feel right. The final thing that I want to mention about this whole subject is I think that, you know, because of our ADHD, we sometimes have trouble I don't know, just keeping our mouth shut, right? Authenticity and integrity is so important to us that we feel like if we don't voice our opinions, we're going to feel like total phonies. And I really struggled with, especially when it involved anyone in an underdog type situation. If I thought people were being cruel, I had to open my mouth and it didn't really matter who was on the receiving end. And I, I think about so many situations like in high school and just, you know, personally with other women friends. One situation was, related to work where, you know, I was a real estate broker and we were part of an agency with, I don't know, probably about a hundred agents and it was falling apart. And it was falling apart in part because the lead broker, he just couldn't do it financially anymore. And so there were all these emails going back and forth and they were so judgmental and like he was doing this personally, like he wanted this to happen. And I just, I couldn't take it anymore. So I wrote an email to, you know, the hundred agents that were part of that agency and said, basically, would you give him a break? You know, this is entrepreneurialism and this is part of what happens with entrepreneurialism. Sometimes people fail, but it's not really a failure because it's going to allow him 
to go and do something else, just like it's going to allow us to go and do something else. So let's just figure out what is the best workaround for this crappy situation and not have to make an enemy of this broker who had done so many great things for us. He did not do this on purpose. And I have to tell you that I got a lot of emails back and a lot of emails to the group generally saying, thank you for speaking up. But there were a lot of people who just felt like this was a personal slide. So what I have learned is if I can't change it, I now keep my mouth shut. My opinion does not always have to be heard. And if it won't change what's going on, it is not going to be heard. Now, I realize that by saying what it is that I think, by having to have an opinion, what my goal is, is I am trying to connect. Yet the reality of it is, it doesn't always help connecting at all. Sometimes it really upsets people and offends them. You know, the other thing is that we as ADHDers, we are change agents. We are all about challenging the status quo. We have vision. We see possibilities, but most people don't. And the way society has been set up, it's been set up to keep things just the way they are, right? To stop us from changing. And most people do not see the possibilities. So you're almost, you're just talking at someone rather than having a conversation with them. So what I constantly tell myself is what you're seeing is not what most people see. So just relax and let it go. Your opinion and insight is not always needed. One other thing, I I know I said that the last thing was the final thing, but I just thought about this, and I want to mention this about intuition. And I bet you a lot of you, if not all of you, know about the Meyer-Briggs test. So it's a personality test that puts people into categories based on their preferences and how they perceive the world around them and make decisions. And years ago, I did my own independent test on types and ADHD, and recently I did it again. And so it's that second letter, the N in ENFP or INFP that I'm talking about. So for the second category, that second letter, you either rely on your five senses for information. So you're a sensor, okay, sensing, or you rely on your intuition for information. So you're an intuitive, right? That's the N in ENFP or INFP. It's the intuition. And I found an old study that did demonstrate a correlation between the Meyer-Briggs personality type and ADHD subjects. And specifically, it was that there was a significant correlation between the intuitive function and those having ADHD. So, you know, when people are wondering, well, is there really anything that, I mean, that proves that we are more intuitive? Beyond asking ADHDers, most of them will tell you, yes, I am definitely more intuitive. But I think you can also see it in this Meyer Briggs test. Now, in the times when I'm going back to our Facebook group where there were a couple comments, no, I'm not intuitive at all. But the comment that was made that I'm thinking of was, no, I'm not intuitive at all. But I think I am on the spectrum as well. I think that there might be some autism there. So there's less of an understanding of personal relationships and, you know, how they work. So that's what I have for you today. As always, you are listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. I'm so sorry I went a little long. If you like what you're hearing, I would so appreciate if you drop us a review. If you'd like to know more about me, our patent pending cartography system that teaches you how to align who you are with what you do, or if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com and you can click on podcast in the navigation bar. You'll see a microphone to your right where you can leave me an audio message. You can also reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you liked what you heard, we sure would appreciate a review. And not coincidentally, ADHD for Smartass Women, well, that's also the name of our free Facebook group. Go look it up. We're a totally smartass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. We'd love to have you join us. You can also find all my details over at tracyoutsuka.com. 
don't forget, I spy a happier life for us. And I'll see you again next week. 